Good morning to everybody. Uh, Andrea Quintiliani already uh, introduced uh, the topic, introduced uh, uh, the main frame. I will, uh, let's say, go a little bit deep inside the concept of exploitation and uh, provide, uh, let's say, a quick overview on why exploitation is very, very important uh, and why it is very, very important in Horizon 2020 and why it is going to be even more important in Horizon Europe. Uh, just a few words uh, on uh, ourselves, sorry. Uh, we, as Andrea said, uh, uh, Meta Group is a company who has experience in working with exploitation. We have been doing this uh, over the last uh, years, uh, I would say the last 10 years, working with the European Commission since the Framework Program 7 in supporting research uh, consortia in using their research results. Uh, we have been working at different level, uh, even at the level of startup spin-off, and also investing in early stage companies in order to help them out in going from knowledge to market. Just to give you an idea, so far we already supported more than 1,000 European projects in the journey that goes from the let's say development of the research towards the use of the results. Why uh, uh, innovation is important? and why the European Commission insists uh, a lot. Huh? Um, they, uh, they founded, they invested a lot in research, but the situation so far, and this is called also the European dilemma, is that very few results uh, are reaching use or the market. Uh, and uh, Andrea already said that uh, exploitation, which we will see uh, later on, means using results, is not only using results in a commercial way. Yeah? What is important is that the investment in new knowledge uh, comes out in something that then is used by others and is used uh, in order to generate a change. And uh, we all know uh, that use does not depend on, only on the technology, on how good, nice, innovative the technology is, but it also depends on the way we organize ourselves to make sure that that result is used. And we will see what does this mean in a few moments. Something that happens to us several times, uh, almost every time, we work on exploitation. We always have somebody that says, I mean, our job as researchers uh, is not to uh, aim at a, a commercial use. Uh, we researchers, we have a mission which is to uh, exploit, uh, actually to explore new frontier, to discovery. Our job is curiosity driven. This is all correct. Huh? It's all important. Uh, we just need to take into consideration that if we work within a program, that actually if we work within a project which has been financed and funded by Horizon 2020 or in the future uh, by Horizon uh, Europe, uh, uh, we need to have clear in mind that this is an impact-oriented program. Uh, which means that at the end of the day, the European Commission wants to see the results used, uh, which is very much different from other funded programs like the one funded by the European Research, Research Council, uh, which are more, let's say, curiosity driven than, than this one. When we apply to Horizon 2020, when we are part of a project funded by the program, we have to have clear in mind that all our activities have to be use oriented. And just to uh, make clear uh, uh, the link uh, in between the result, use, and how this is connected to impact and exploitation, uh, I just would like to, to let you reflect uh, 
on this, let's say, uh, transfiguration, uh, if you allow me the term, of the, the overall concept. Uh, we, we can, let's say, picture uh, the, the target, that you can see here as the <clears throat> planet, as the challenge. So we are all aware that when we take part to the race on 2020 uh, call for proposals, uh, there is always a challenge uh, that has been stated and described. So the target is the challenge and its players. Uh, the stakeholders, the customer, the target groups, the beneficiaries, the ones who are somehow affected by the challenge. The ballot uh, is the result or is one of the results uh, we are going to develop. And of course, the impact uh, is the effect that the use of the result by our target groups uh, uh, creates on the target, on the challenge. So it's very, very important to have the clear link in between the result, its use, its use by the key target groups, and impact. Because it's, our main aim is to produce an effect. Uh -huh. An effect, at the end of the day, is that there is a benefit from using that result. And uh, this also means uh, that uh, the use, actually, the result has to be also very clear at the time of the proposal, has to be extremely clear how we plan to use the results. And then in the exploitation work package, uh, we need to explain how we are going to facilitate use during the project life. And we will learn later on, as Andrea Quintiliani said, uh, that use and impact are going to happen mainly after the project end. So it's all a set of activities that allows us to be prepared. Uh, what is use? As Andrea said, use is not just commercial use. That means going to the market with product or process could be anything, and of course, uh, the use depends uh, by the TRL. The higher the TRL is, is going, to, the TRL is going to be at the end of, the, of our activities, uh, uh, the more uh, the expectation is that we go towards uh, the market, the lower uh, TRL is by the end of the project, the more the expectation is, uh, on the possibility is that we use that result uh, to do other activities, for example, research or contract research. Uh, but there are also other kinds of uses uh, connected to the provision of services and contract research at the end of the day is a service, but also uh, using the results in order to promote uh, a change in terms of standardization or policy and support measure. What is important to have clear in mind that use could be only either direct, which means by the project partners, by the ones who signed the contract agreement, or indirect, by third party, by somebody else outside the consortium. And if the use is going to be indirect, then we have an obligation to facilitate uh, the indirect use by third parties, which means uh, that uh, we need to do all our best to make sure that they can use the results. And indirect use could be either transfer of results, so if you have a piece of IP uh, which is sold, so we transfer the property of the result, or could be through licensing, which means that we allow somebody else outside the consortium to use our IP. 
and uh, just to uh, clarify something uh, that sometimes is not very much clear uh, if we plan uh, to use the result assigning responsibility to use to a spin-off being a spin-off different from the initial partnership because it's a different um, juridic person uh, it's a different organization when there is a spin-off involved it's always in direct use and our responsibility is to make sure that the spin-off is entitled to use that piece of knowledge because either we transfer or we license to the spin-off the results and of course uh, uh, as we said uh, benefit uh, generating value uh, which is the effect uh, could be different things depending on the target group sometimes happen to us uh, to deal with public organization not for profit type of partners and they say our main aim is not making a profit how can we exploit a result uh, of course there is the possibility to exploit the result and not for profit organization for example a municipality uh, can always provide better services to their citizen or can improve uh, okay provide uh, uh, services uh, in a better way uh, so generating a benefit of value of course is connected to revenues and profits and commercial success if the target group is a company uh, but it's also related to generating a benefit uh, uh, for the ones who are not a target a, a, a private company like universities and of course and of course every every uh, project partner uh, always increases the internal knowledge of the organization uh, the value of its intangible assets this is what we all do uh, when we perform research but in order to make this knowledge used uh, we need to make sure that this knowledge uh, is shared it's capitalized uh, it's consolidated into i don't know um, a training course with training material we cannot leave this knowledge tacit within uh, the people within ourselves just uh, something i would like to uh, highlight to you making use of results is a contractual obligation it's not something uh, that uh, uh, it's left on a voluntary base it's a contractual obligation stated in the article 28 of the grant agreement of course of course this is not easy uh, because uh, as andrea said at the very beginning exploitation is mainly connected to what happens after the project ends so it's connected to sustainability and not in terms of of course uh, uh, environmental sustainability but mainly in terms of let's say financial and operational sustainability we need to make sure that we are able to perform whatever we are supposed to, to perform even after the project ends we are responsible to make sure that that result can be used again article 28 and of course there are many challenges related to the level of TRL uh, we know that in many cases uh, at the end of the project TRL is still low and there is the need to perform other activities in order to increase the TRL to our use we know that the time horizon uh, can be extremely challenging uh, sometimes it's not even three five years after the project end and during the project life we need to identify what are the activities 
that we will have to perform in the next three, five years. And we need to do our best uh, in order to make sure that this can happen, even if we know uh, that it's difficult to do this kind of uh, planification. And of course, uh, there are uh, challenges which are not just related to the technology itself, but also to the organizational dimension, the legal dimension. Uh, we need to make sure that the intellectual property, if this is the case, is protected. We need to make sure that the relationship uh, among partners are kept if we foresee future collaboration. And of course, uh, we need to make sure that if we are part of an organization, of a structure, we got the authorization to keep working on the topic. And sometimes we also need to make sure that there are business arrangements if uh, there is a prototype to be validated, if there is collaboration with the private sector, uh, with companies uh, that is needed uh, in order to increase the TRL or to go to market after the project end. And of course, uh, it, all this is related to the possibility to secure resources and of course among resources. We also need financial resources and to secure resources for the time horizon we have in mind and at the time we need them, which means in most of the case, the activities that need to be performed during the project life. Of course, of course, we need to be aware that is, there is no automatic connection in between having fantastic results and creating uh, an amazing impact or creating the impact uh, which is expected to be created. And the simple reason is that if the result is not used and if the result is not used by the key target groups at the end of the project, then there is no impact. And this brings to the fact, as Andrea said, uh, that not all the results uh, uh, can be considered key exploitable results. Uh, or sometimes it's important also to make a selection because the key exploitable results, the ones that are expected uh, to make an, an impact, uh, they have the potential to stay alive after the project ends, they need uh, to be selected according to the demand of specific target group uh, in order to solve their problems. And we will see this in the approach and in the presentation, how the problem and the link with problems is important. Uh. So it's not just uh, a project deliverable, uh, but it's something with, let's say, special features. Uh. And again, just to clarify, sometimes uh, as a key exploitable result, we see uh, uh, that there is a patent mentioned. Again, a patent is not a key exploitable result. Patenting uh, a piece of IP, it's part of the exploitation process uh, is part of the actions we need to perform in order to make sure that a piece of knowledge is used uh, and it's part of a strategy that we have in mind to make sure that we get for example an unfair, uh, unfair advantage towards some possible competitor or or something needed in order to allow to allow licensing if licensing is one of the indirect uses we plan to achieve so just to keep in mind uh, it's not just ticking a box and something that uh, i would like to clarify is that uh, exploitation and dissemination are two different things they are both key and crucial in order to maximize impact, as Andrea Quintiliani uh, highlighted uh, at the beginning of this uh, workshop, uh, but they are different. 
and uh, they are different because they are part of two different articles. Uh, dissemination is 29 and expedition is 28, and we already put it to 28. And just to make a very long story, uh, and you will see these also in the next slides, and of course, the slides will be available. Exploitation is making use of results and targets who are going to use the results. Dissemination is making available results. So it's informing, for example, about results, making sure that the target groups for exploitation are reached by the information. And in fact, the target groups are the ones who may make use of results. And here I'm providing you a list of activities huh, that help to clarify these two concepts. In order to be efficient and effective in dissemination or in disseminating, we need to have identified in a clear, precise way the results, the ones who are going to use the results, and the use model. Because this is going to be the, the base uh, in order to plan our activities to reach the target groups who may use the results. Here is uh, uh, some material from the European Commission, which helps uh, either to, to better clarify this, this concept and the differences in between exploitation, dissemination, and also the difference, the important difference in between dissemination and communication. Because while when we disseminate, we focus on results and on specific target groups, communication aims at uh, informing a wider audience. And it's not just on results, it's also about activities and general challenges. Uh, it's what we do, for example, with our websites. Of course, uh, the European Commission is aware that this is difficult. Uh, Andrea Quintiliani already said how within the scientific community uh, the concept of uh, using results exploitation is just uh, uh, rooting uh, in these days. So the European Commission makes available services and I've seen uh, among the, the participants also some of the experts which are part uh, of these uh, different schemes made available by the European Commission. One of these, it's a new one, is called Horizon Results Booster. And it's a set of services that help project partners in maximizing impact, providing support in terms of uh, uh, exploitation and dissemination, in terms of uh, going to market. Uh, and providing even very specific services that go from IPR support, innovation management, uh, definition of the business plan, access to non EU funding, and also uh, pitching, uh, which is extremely important. And we may see later on why pitching is so useful. My um, recommendation uh, is to exploit, if you allow me, these services, take advantage. These are provided at no cost for the project because they are uh, paid by the European Commission. And as far as your horizon result, results booster, you can quickly access from the, the website and request the services from there anytime, even if uh, your project is ending. Another uh, interesting service, this is more limited to public research organizations and university, is the Intellectual Property Booster. Intellectual Property Booster provides uh, 
a set of services again supported by the European Commission and no cost for the ones who request on IP uh, and help in let's say understanding the positioning of a piece of intellectual property uh, understanding the value of that piece of IP uh, and then there are also some additional services in order to prepare uh, applications for not just the patent but also design trademark also provide some support for negotiating uh, licensing agreement and technology transfer if uh, uh, the piece is ready for use even here you can apply from the web uh, there is a, a deadline, there is a cut-off date, uh, because you can always uh, apply every time, but there is a cut-off date for evaluating application, the 15th of February, so let's say in two weeks. My recommendation is, uh, if you are a public research organization, if you have a piece of IP you would like to better understand how to use and its value, please apply. So, this is it. Uh, in terms of introducing the overall concept. Uh, now I would like to spend a few words on what we have done uh, uh, within ECOE in order to introduce the presentation uh, from, uh, let's say, the, the colleagues uh, who worked with us uh, in this process towards use and who devoted uh, time uh, uh, to better understand uh, the results, characterize it, and work on exploitation in order to prepare the ground for dissemination. Uh, the first step uh, is to start looking at what we do, our results from a different point of view, using a tool that uh, we call characterization table. And uh, the approach, uh, since this is impact-oriented, use-oriented, uh, having in mind that our main objective is to generate uh, a change a modification in the uh, in the challenge so to create a benefit uh, uh, that uh, we sh should shouldn't just focus on the scientific dimension uh, of our uh, work uh, but uh, we need to understand uh, how uh, and focus on on the use uh, with a logic which is we call problem oriented uh, uh, trying to understand uh, why our potential user our target group should uh, use our result instead of others so uh, it, the characterization table helps to start concentrating on for example uh, how to increase the TRA after the project is ended and we know that this is a big challenge because lack of resources after the project ended uh, we are not concerned about resources during the project life we are concerned of uh, resources uh, after the the project ended and we will learn huh, how tough is the competition in terms of resources uh, later on with the presentation of the care and our approach is to focus on some key ingredient of the result, uh, which is not the technology itself, but is what we call the univalue proposition, which is what makes our result much better uh, than what else is available. The use model, uh, how we are going to make sure that this result is made available uh, either to third party or is used by, by us, by the consortium partners, and to focus on a specific part of the target groups who are the early adopters, which are the ones who are going to use our result as first. Uh, the ones who are going to, let's say, to make the difference uh, in order to making sure that dissemination works. And of course, the approach also for seeing thinking at next steps what will happen after the project ends and how we need to organize ourselves and the characterization table which is what we will uh, listen for the 
presentation following this short introduction uh, is based on, first of all, the description of the problem. The problem we are addressing. And this is the problem our target group had. The potential users or customers, uh, as we call them. The identification of the alternative solution. If somebody has a problem, by definition, they try to solve that problem in some way. So it's very, very important that we try to identify and focus and describe the how our users or potential customers in bracket, as you can see, because again, it's not just commercial, uh, are trying to solve so far. And this uh, helps us to come up with what we call the unique value proposition. What our solution does better than the alternative solutions when it solves the problems that our target groups have. So there is a strict connection in between the univalue proposition, the problem and alternative solution. Sometimes we see that one of the elements of the univalue proposition is price, for example. Uh, we say, oh, you know, guys, our solution, it's cheaper than what else on the market. This is part of the unique value proposition only if cost, price, is part of the problem of our customers. There are situations where the price doesn't matter. Just to make a, a, a stupid example, uh, which is stupid, but helps to clarify. If you want to buy a Ferrari, uh, we are not concerned about the price. Nobody buys a Ferrari because it's cheaper than a Maserati or a whatever. Huh? And then, uh, once we have identified the univalue proposition, we describe our solution. How we are going to bring that univalue proposition to our target groups. And we always struggle, and the ones who participated to the exercises so far know how much we stress the importance not to start with the description of the solution when we approach exploitation, eh? but just leave the description of the solution after we clarified our univalue proposition, the problem and the alternative solution. Once this is cleared, then eh, we can describe what the target market is, who are our target groups, and the more we are precise here, the better it's going to be, because the easier it's going to make sure that things will happen after the project ends. And then we have to describe the use model. How we will put in use this specific key exploitable result. Are we going to do some contract research uh, in order to keep developing uh, the result with a very specific uh, uh, end user, or customer? Uh, are we going to do it by ourselves and commercialize itself, either it's a product or it's a service? Are we going to close some licensing agreement with very specific type of groups? Huh? Are we going to set up huh, another research project because the TRL is so low huh, that needs to be increased before using the result? Huh? And please uh, keep in mind that this opportunity happens if the TRL is low. Because if the TRL uh, it's higher, it's closer to the market, then uh, the European Commission uh, asks us a, a different way of uh, going to, towards use. And then we focus on the early adopters. What the first one, we are going to knock the door uh, to make sure that they use our result. So if a licensing is a use model, 
uh, early adopters are going to be the ones uh, we would like to sign a license agreement as first. Uh, uh, later on, we may discuss the difference in between uh, the customers and uh, uh, the ones who may be the end user uh, of the of the result, but we will see this later on. We need to focus on competitors. The competitors are the ones who are providing the alternative solutions. Uh, if you remember, alternative solutions are a key element uh, that allow us to understand also the direction for the development of our results, uh, because we need to be better than that as much as possible. And then we need to look at what is next uh, in terms of ownership of the result, background, foreground, which means what has been produced during the project life. And usually, actually, by default, uh, background and foreground are defined by the consortium agreement. Uh, and usually, there is the need uh, to to have a better understanding, a better agreement, especially in the foreground. So we always suggest uh, to go back to your consortium agreement and look up what should be next. And then, last but not the least, uh, what we call the go, uh, the timing to go to market, which means how long it takes after the project ends before our target groups, our early adopters can use the result, which means if we plan to do contract research, uh, how long it takes before somebody uh, will sign a contract research agreement, or if it's going to be licensing, how long it will take after the project end before uh, we close a licensing deal. This is what uh, I wanted to, to say in order to introduce expectation, use of results, impact, and to, let's say, set the ground for the presentations of the speakers uh, that will uh, um, uh, join us uh, now, uh, who, I mean, will share their experience in dealing with the characterization table, uh, and uh, they will show how some of the expo key exploitable results of ECOE have been, let's say, framed uh, within their characterization table. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot.